Hey there CTM students, welcome to the lesson for 8.3. It can be found on these pages. Here's your new vocabulary, and here's your reminder to use the examples in your book for additional help with your assignment. Let's get going. Uh, so mass and temperature, let's start off with mass. Uh, what am I talking about when I say mass, and is there a difference between mass and weight? You may have heard the word mass before, you may have heard the word, I hope you've heard the word weight before. Uh, but mass is more of a, uh, I'd say a, a term you use in a science class, something like that. But let's define the difference between the two. Uh, so let me move that over just a little bit more. There we go. So mass is this. It's the measure of the amount of matter in an object. So this is kind of based atomically or molecularly uh, in terms of like how many molecules are there, how, how much mass do these molecule molecules have and so on. So mass and weight, different things. Weight is dependent on gravity. So weight is the measure of the gravitational pull on an object. So let's just talk briefly about these people up here and what's going on with them. So this, uh, can't tell if this guy or girl, that looks like guy feet to me. Uh, they don't look, it looks like they might have little hair, little hobbit hair on the, the feet there. Oh, I'm not totally sure on that one. But this would be a scale. This looks like a U.S. customary scale to me. I don't think we'd have a scale going up to 280 kilograms. Uh, but this person will step on the scale. They'll get their, their weight in pounds. The difference between weight and mass here. I'm saying this guy, he could be, you could take this scale to the moon. So we could take this scale to the moon, and his weight would only be one-sixth of what it is on Earth because the gravitational pull on the moon is less than on Earth. But the mass of this person is not going to change. still has the same mass on the moon as he would on Earth. So mass doesn't change dependent on gravity. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. So like atoms, molecules, the amount of matter in an object. This person jumping on the moon, you can jump higher on the moon because there's only one-sixth of the gravitational pull on the moon. Uh, I'd like to go to the moon just because of that someday. I'd love to play basketball on the moon. That would be pretty sweet. And so rather than write a whole quote out here from the book, I just want to read this uh, to you on page 451. I think it's important enough to, to at least read together here. So it says, although weight and mass are not the same, on Earth, they are proportional to each other. And in parentheses, the greater the weight, the greater the mass. Therefore, for our purposes, we can treat weight and mass as the same. So we're not going to make a distinction from this point forward about mass and weight. It would depend if you were on this really high mountaintop uh, compared to, so you're way up there, maybe up Mount Everest, something like that, compared to being at sea level or even below sea level, maybe in Death Valley, something like that you're actually going to weigh a little less on the top of Mount Everest than you would down at Bad Water, Bad Water Basin in Death Valley, negative 282 feet below sea level. Um, because the gravitational pull is stronger the closer you get to the Earth. Um, but again, we're not going to worry about that for the sake of this. Um, pretty negligible in terms of how much difference in weight there would be. When we're talking about mass, we're going to assume that these things are essentially the same which they are as long as you don't get too far away from the, the center of the earth. Uh, so let's talk about one other thing here that you probably never seen this word before unless you are adept with the metric system. The metric and how do you pronounce this word? Let me pull it up for you here. I had to check too. I just wanted to make sure, bud. Play. Go ahead. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that. No. Ton. There you go. Okay. Let's do that one more time. Ton. Ton. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 
All right, so a ton, that's pronounced ton, just like we would pronounce ton with T-O-N without this extra N-E. Uh, but when we're doing metric tons, we spell it like this. And so a metric ton, let me erase that a second, it's going to have this as its symbol, just a T, a lowercase T. I'll make my T's with little curls at the end, and I want you to do that too, so it doesn't look like a plus sign. And so we have T is equal to, it's a very, very uh, massive thing. It's equal to a thousand kilograms. So a kilogram is pretty heavy in and of itself, but a thousand kilograms is one metric ton, one T. Uh, so let's move on to an example from there and check this out. So got some different objects over here. I want to determine, let's write this down first, I want to determine what's most appropriate to measure the mass of, and then we'll have five different things here like we had in our previous lesson. So we'll start with a paper clip. That'll be part A, a paper clip. What would you say? So I'm going to go back here to 8.1 and remember these are our prefixes and we're generally just going to use kilograms, we're going to use, we're not going to use hecta, hecto and deca very often. We'll use our base grams and we'll use centigrams and milligrams not so much centigrams really either, but more more milligrams, grams, and kilograms, and then the metric ton. Uh, so one of those four options, what would a paperclip be best measured by? I would say it ends up weighing a large paperclip is about one gram. So you could say a gram or a milligram, I feel like, would be a, a pretty good option too. So I'll put mg or g. So the, the four basic terms of measurements would be milligram, gram, kilogram, and metric ton. Uh, so we're going to choose one of those four things for each one of these. So a paper clip, me, me, <laughs> milligrams or grams. A human being, a human being, let me write it like that. A human being, a human being. And I would say milligrams definitely not heavy enough. Grams and eh, not not quite. Kilograms would be a much better representation of how heavy a person is or how massive a person is. It's probably a, it is a better way to say that since I'm talking about mass. Uh, so a kilogram is about 2.2 pounds. Just a little FYI for you. About 2.2 pounds is one kilogram. Uh, what would you say about a mountain? You look at this, and I would say definitely not milligrams, definitely not grams, or kilograms is even too little, I think, too too small. This one, I think the metric ton would probably be the best. So how many metric tons, how many thousand kilograms do we have over here with this mountain? Uh, let's talk about our last two here, a pair of scissors. I think milligrams probably a little too small there, but grams would be a, a good way to represent that. I don't think this would weigh one kilogram. I don't think this would weigh 2.2 pounds, but a pair of scissors, grams, I think would be best for that. So just a lowercase g for that. And how about an ant? An ant, I would say grams. It's probably not going to weigh even one gram, but milligrams would be a, a good, good uh, term to use for, for an ant. So milligrams there. Okay, so now let's talk about the volume of mass and water a bit and how those things relate to each other. So volume in, we did cubic units before, so I'm going to put that here. We're going to see how this relates to the mass of water. So this was 8.2, and I brought up 8.2 just to, to remind you of that. So we had some metric equivalents. We had cubic centimeters, cc's is one milliliter and so forth here, decimeter cubed and a meter cubed like that. Uh, and we had some examples, so some other metric and US customary things down there, but volume in cubic units, and then the volume in liters, let's put that here, 
in this column, volume in liters. And over here, we're going to put the mass of water. And they match up pretty nicely. You'll see what I mean in a second by that. So one cubic centimeter, one cc. That was, if we go back to 8.2, we can remind ourselves just looking at those notes, one cc, that was one milliliter. Um, one decimeter squared, or cubed, sorry, is one liter. One cubic meter is one kiloliter. So I'm going to put all that stuff in here already. So one dm cubed and one meter cubed. So this becomes, we've got one milliliter again, use the cursive L's for liters. This was one liter. If you think of something 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, that's one decimeter squared. That would be one liter. And then this is the one kiloliter right there. And so what's the mass of the water here? Well, one liter we said that was 2.2 pounds, or one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. That's the same as one liter. So a kilogram and a liter, a liter of water has a mass of one kilogram. All these metric uh, measurements based on or, or matching up with the, the mass of water. So this is just a, a one to one relationship here. So we just have one equals one over here. Same sort of thing, one milliliter is one gram. So if you took one milliliter of water, that would have a mass of one gram and one kiloliter of water has a mass of one T. What's that T stand for again? That's metric ton. So one metric ton. In other words, it's a thousand kilograms. So these are things you should know. These are things you need to know. Uh, let's move on though to a second example. So here I have a what I would call a horse watering trough. And uh, we're going to do an example here where we figure out the, the volume of this horse watering trough, figure out how many liters it holds, and figure out how heavy that's going to be as well. So let's write this down here. So a watering trough is, and I think this matches up pretty well with this actually. I don't know if it's quite three meters long, but I'm going to pretend that it is. It's three meters long, 70 centimeters wide. I think that could be a decent estimate of that right there, 70 centimeters wide, and 40 centimeters high. So we're estimating this as a, a rectangular prism, a, a box that holds water, essentially. And so that's the intro to this, and now part A to this, determine the number of liters of water the trough holds. And so how can we do this? Well, we go back to our volume formulas and the volume of a rectangular prism, volume of a box in other words, was just length times width times height. This L is me standing for length right now, not, not liters. Uh, so we have length is, well this is three meters, but then these are in centimeters and centimeters. I want to compare the same things. And if I look back at this table right here, I want to know more, excuse me, what my, what my measurement is going to be in, in liters and not milliliters. So I'm going to convert everything to meters instead. And I can convert back to milliliters or liters from my kiloliters. If I'm converting to, to cubic meters, I'm going to have a measurement that matches up with that exactly in kiloliters. So let's convert everything to meters. So this is going to be 3. What is 70 centimeters in terms of meters? Well, think of going back. So let's write this. At this point, take out, you, guess, you got it, you guessed it, a different, a different color. Take that out. Take out a different color, get that different color out. Thank you, okay. And let's show this in a different color. So off to the side, some side work here. 70 centimeters is the same thing as, if I move the decimal, I'm gonna be moving, we go back to this. If you forgot, 
So you're starting with oops, you're starting with you're going the base unit meters. You're starting with meters and going down two spots to get to centimeters. So we got to move that decimal two spots, and we're moving it two spots to the right or to the left here. Sorry, because we're going to a larger unit. So this would be 0 0.70. You could say I'll put the zero in right here. I'm going to leave the zero out though when I put it over there because I don't need that extra zero there. So 40 centimeters, same sort of thing. That would be move the decimal two spots. You got 0.4, 0 0.40. You can think of it like that. So why am I changing these here? Make a little note off to the side here using the different color. We must have. the same. So they've all got to be the same. That's why I did what I did here. I converted all to meters. You could have converted all to centimeters. You could have converted all to something else. I just thought that this would be easiest on us in the end though because I kind of know where I'm going with this. I know I want to get kiloliters and I know I want to get liters. I want to be able to compare those sorts of things and not milliliters which would be what I would have if I kept it in centimeters. I would have milliliters I want to go with with uh, kiloliters instead because this is going to hold quite a bit of water. So let's put this here. I got my W is going to be. It wouldn't really matter, but I could put this first and then that. But my W, I have width right there, so I'm going to put 0.7, and then my height is 0.4. So we can multiply all these all together. A little trick when you're doing your mental math like this, or if you're going to do this mentally, you got three times seven is 21 and then 21 times 4 is 84 and then I notice I have two places to the right of the decimal that are included so instead of 84 it would be 0.84 because that would move it two places to the, the, the de would move the decimal two places to the left so I'd have two places to the right of the decimal so this is the same thing as 0.84 this is meters times meters times meters so that would be meters cubed that means that this water trough for these horses would actually hold, oops, wrong one, so one meter cubed is one kiloliter, so it's going to be just that one to one matchup, it's 0.84 kiloliters, so not quite a thousand liters, but almost, it's going to be 840 liters then, so if I change this, move that three spots to go from kiloliters to the base unit of liters, this would become 800 in 40 liters. So that is the number of liters that the trough holds. So could I have done centimeters squared and then gone the other way with a decimal? Sure, I could have taken this. I am thinking the wrong thing here. No, 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 I was thinking the right thing. That's the one I want though. So I could have done centimeters cubed and got a number in milliliters. So if I would have done that, that would have given me, this would be 300, this would have been 70 and 40. I would have multiplied those all together and I would have gotten 800 and uh, I believe it's 840,000. Then I would have to move the decimal, 840,000 milliliters, move the decimal three spots the other way to get 840 liters. So you could have done it that way too. So both ways work. I just chose to go with this. And then the other question here, what's the mass of the water in kilograms. And don't get too bent out of shape on this one. Well, let's just think, okay, what did you just tell me, Mr. Wagner? The mass of water in kilograms. So we go back to this table over here. One liter was the same thing as one kilogram. Oh my gosh. That makes this problem incredibly easy then. So since that's true, since one liter, let's write this down. Since one liter equals one kilogram, that would mean 840 liters equals 840 kilograms. Easy. And bada boom, bada bing, we move on to the next topic. So temperature now. Talking about temperature instead of mass. Common temperatures. We've done a little bit of this 
already. But we're going to do a little more in depth here with temperatures. So over here I'm going to put some Celsius temperatures and over here I'm going to put some Fahrenheit temperatures, but spell it like that. It's kind of like Fa Ren Height. So Fahrenheit, Celsius, and then in here will just kind of be the description of the temperature in question. So I'm going to I'm going to put some light yellow lines here. I think that'll help me keep my my ideas easy to to read here. So you have blue lines on your paper, most likely you just use those. Uh, but I'm going to have let's see how many I got there. I got eight different ones, so I'm going to put eight rows in here. Three, four. See if you know your Spanish. Five is cinco. Six is seis. Seven, siete, and then I have eight down here for ocho. All right, so this is good to go now. Let's put here a very cold day. A very cold day. That'll be my first one. If you live in Southern California, if you have lived in Southern California all, all your life, you might say, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh my gosh, I'm so cold. It's 40 degrees Fahrenheit out. Ah, oh, what? You guys need to move to the north and experience some real cold temperatures. Uh, so I would say a very cold day is for a Michigander like me, zero degrees Fahrenheit. That's cold. That is, you go outside and your nose hairs freeze and you like, you just, you can hardly breathe. It's so cold. So zero degrees Fahrenheit, what would that be in Celsius? If I look at this, this gives me Celsius and Fahrenheit kind of next to each other. So zero degrees Fahrenheit, that's kind of right in there. It ends up being negative 18 degrees Celsius. That's darn cold. That is very, very cold. How about the freezing point of water? It's the freezing point of water. We've talked about this one already in a prior lesson. Freezing point of water for Fahrenheit was 32 degrees. Fahrenheit. And for Celsius, it makes a lot more sense. You start at zero with the freezing point of water. So a lot of things in the metric system based on water. We've got a kilogram is the same weight as one liter of water. We've got zero degrees. Celsius is the freezing point of water. I like that they did that. Water is a, a, a thing that we all use all the time. So it's a good thing to base a lot of metric units on. So 10 degrees Celsius, I would call that that's going to be a pretty chilly day. What does 10 degrees Celsius match up with if we look over here? 10 degrees Celsius, about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Ends up being exactly 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, how about a, I'm calling it a temperate day, so it's kind of a mild day, a temperate day. And to me, a, a temperate day or just kind of a, a nice, a plain, plain old nice temperature. Just nice to be outside. You can wear a t-shirt if you're kind of tough, I guess, but definitely no super duper multi layers required or a big coat or jacket or anything like that. Just a, just kind of a mild day. 68 degrees Fahrenheit. If you are in a, a country that uses Celsius, what would they say in the weather report instead? What would you see? That would be about 20 degrees Celsius here. So that's 20 degrees Celsius. A warm day in Fahrenheit, a warm day, I would say 86 is a pretty warm day. That's, that's a pretty nice day. Good day to go to the beach, I think. This is about, or it is, 30 degrees Celsius in metric system here in Celsius temperatures. And then body temperature, we talked about that before. Body temperature is for us in, in Fahrenheit, we think of it as 98.6 degrees. And in Celsius, it's about 37 degrees. And then we had the boiling point of water. <coughs> that was 212. And it was made a lot more sense. Celsius 100, so zero to 100 
they used to call, and some places they still do call the the uh, Celsius thermometers, the centigrade thermometers, because it would go from, it's basically based on zero to a hundred, centa meaning a hundred, just like centimeter. We have Celsius in, in terms of centigrade, that would be a hundred there. You have cents in a dollar, you can think of it like that too. And then let's do one more here, more of a, a common temperature here would be like an oven baking temperature. So a lot of things in Fahrenheit get baked. You look at maybe the maybe you buy some frozen pizza and you're like how much what do I got to set the oven for? A 350 is pretty common. 400 is also pretty common but 350 350 degrees that would be about 177 degrees Celsius. So if you're ever traveling you go to a foreign country I'm covering up the Fahrenheit stuff here because you're never going to hear that. They're not going to say oh it's this many degrees Fahrenheit. You would have to take the degrees they give you in Celsius over here and kind of convert that in your head until you get used to hearing Celsius temperatures more. You'd have to go back and think of it in terms of Fahrenheit to realize, oh, it's actually not that cold out or it's actually going to be a really nice day out. Uh, somebody told me 20 degrees and I was like, are you kidding me? 20 degrees? But then I remembered I was in a different country and oh, well, that's right. Okay. That's how the rest of the world does stuff. I'm, a, I'm in the U.S. and I think everybody's got to do things my way. No, okay. So example three. Sorry, I, I don't mean to pick on the U.S. Sorry. Again, I love the United States of America. I love being here. It's the best country in the world, I think. But I don't understand why we're so stubborn about the metric system, really. Uh, so let's do, let's do this. I think we should adopt it. I think I'm going to start a petition. Maybe you will sign my petition. I hope I can convince you that it's worthwhile. So choose an appropriate Celsius temperature. So we're going to say now that we are thinking in terms of Celsius temperatures instead of Fahrenheit temperatures. And let's say part A, let's say we're in my hometown, Grand Rapids, Michigan. And let's say we're there on Christmas, so 12, 25. What would an appropriate temperature be there? I would probably say, if we go back to this, this is actually a picture in Grand Rapids uh, in the winter. Often would have, most of the time uh, growing up, I almost always had a, a white Christmas where we had snow on the ground for Christmas, and then it lasted through December, through January, February, and March and even into April until finally all the snow would melt on the ground. So we had a, a solid four months of snow on the ground. Uh, but what would a, a reasonable temperature be? I'd say it would be below freezing if there's snow on the ground that's sticking, not disappearing. So I might say just a little below freezing it might be like negative five degrees Celsius. So I'm going to put this is a reasonable temperature. Could you have something close to this, plus or minus a few degrees? Yeah, I would say so. Uh, but that is a reasonable temperature. I remember one time in December, early December, we had a, a college class. We, we took our college class outside and because it was like 70 degrees, it was the beginning of December, almost never happened in Michigan where we had something like that. So our my political science professor, he, uh, he was against the idea at first, but then it was so nice. He was just like, okay, I'm gonna do it, okay. You guys got me and so, I, I still remember that, going outside, having a lecture outside, that was pretty cool. Uh, how about Riley Beach? That's how you spell that, Riley Beach in Thailand. This is a picture, not my picture, but a picture of Riley Beach in Thailand. I had the, the opportunity to go there and we, we rode these long boats in. That was the only way you could get to this beach. There are no roads because there's cliffs like this all over the place and no roads are accessible or no, no roads can access this. You had to, to ride this boat and they would drop you off and you get off and just an incredible beach, probably the best beach I've ever been to. Uh, my, my favorite beach of all time. Pretty close to it would be the Nepali coast along Hawaii. That one might, might beat it or at least be on the same par with that. But how about on here July 15? If you go to Thailand, it's pretty near the equator. You're going to be there in the summertime. 
uh, it's going to be pretty warm there. So what would be a, a reasonable temperature for that? Let's go back to, whoa, not that one. Go back to this one. There we go. And so I would say probably upwards of here in this area near, uh, near like 90, a little higher than 90. So I would say maybe like 35 would be pretty reasonable. It's going to be pretty warm there at that time of the year. Uh, but let's put that down here. We could say a little bit less. We could say a little bit more, I think. But that was 90 was. I just I already forgot. So 90, like 35-ish. Yes. Uh, there we go. Man. Stop messing up, Mr. Wagner. There you go. 35 degrees Celsius. Reasonable temperature. Could you have something off of that a little bit? Yeah. I think you probably wouldn't want to go too much higher than that. I don't think it's going to get in the the 110s Fahrenheit wise uh, so we want to keep it below definitely want to keep it below 40 or 42 or something like that because then it's just getting a little too warm and then this last one these guys this is I'm, I'm not making this up uh, I'll show you so right here the World Sauna Championships held from 1999 to 2010 uh, basically until this very moment right here what you see right here these guys were the the final two going at it and they were they just decided to stay in there for for a very very long time they they weren't going to give up one of them neither one of them would quit and so let's put this down a sauna at the world sauna championships how hot did it get in there? The World Sauna Championships. Warning. Warning right now. You are going to see something slightly graphic. I will only put it up here for like a second or two, but just be warned. If you want to fast forward through it, do that. But this is what happened to this this guy. This is what he looked like afterwards. Yes, those are burn marks. Those are yeah, that is not pretty. Okay, so this guy he he didn't give up neither this guy this guy ended up surviving that this guy did not actually this guy passed away um, because he wouldn't quit and uh, don't get into this I would not recommend that but I had brought this up here um, these guys these are all finished flags so it is like sauna going into a sauna is just a super popular thing in Finland it's like a national pastime over there and then this article kind of describes uh, on ESPN it describes what had happened to to the guy and uh, why it wasn't a good idea to stay in there for as long as they did so how hot was it in here you can read that right there 230 degrees this is Fahrenheit um yeah that's probably why bad things happen okay so 230 degrees the boiling point, boiling point of water is 212. So these guys were in an oven, essentially. They were getting, their blood was literally starting to boil. I don't understand why you would want to do that to yourself. It doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, so 210, no, I'm sorry, 230 degrees Fahrenheit. We look at this, my scale doesn't even go that high. So 212 right here, it's going to be up above that a little bit, I would say somewhere around so this is going up like 18 I would go up 18 more and that would be actually exactly 110 so I would I'd be going right here this is like 230 it looks like it go 18 up each time this is 110 and so what would we have here this would be 110 degrees Celsius I don't know how you could survive that for like a half a minute these guys were in there for minutes and minutes on end it just wouldn't quit um, again don't take up this they've actually discontinued the world sauna championships after this happened uh, pretty pretty sad day uh, but let's take a look at some equations we can actually you may have noticed that over here these seem to be matching up it seems like every time I go up 18 I go up 10 every time I go up 18 I go up 10 again this is a linear relationship here so this continues in a linear fashion there's an equation for this so from Celsius to Fahrenheit let's write this down Celsius to 
Fahrenheit. Yuck. That's not looking good. Okay, Fahrenheit. There we go. What's the equation for that? It is F equals nine fifths C. In other words, one point eight C plus thirty-two. We had eighteen for every ten, so it should make sense that one point eight for every one would be matching up. Plus thirty-two. Uh, this equation is what we use if we're going to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Now let's get out that different color again, and let's take that and see what we have there. Uh, so this. I'm going to change this now and solve it for C. So that would give me an equation from Fahrenheit to Celsius. I could plug in a, uh, a Fahrenheit temperature and get Celsius. That's my watch alarm. My laundry is going to be done pretty soon, so I'll just turn that off. I'll finish this up first. So this, I can subtract 32 from both sides. Let's do that under here. Definitely box this in, though. This is a really important equation to know for the purposes of this lesson. So we've got, this would be F minus 32 on this side and then the 32's would cancel out here and here you'd have 9 fifths C right here how do I get rid of something like that all I need to do is take this and multiply it by the what do you call it you flip the fraction it's called the reciprocal so I'll multiply this by the reciprocal do the same thing to both sides of the equation you have to change both sides in the same way that's going to cancel out with that this times this would just be 1 and then you have your final answer right here basically I'm just gonna write the C on the left side I'm gonna write this stuff on the right side so you have 5 ninths times the quantity F minus 32 right there so I'm gonna make another box and here we go so make another box just like that and then this is going to be from Fahrenheit Celsius. I just heard my laundry stop. Um, I'll get that in a second. So from hmm. <coughs> go from Fahrenheit to Celsius. We just derived the equation. So really you only need to memorize one equation. You only need to memorize this. And you can always derive this one from that one. So you can say Celsius is 5 ninths times Fahrenheit minus 32. So know this one at least, and if you can remember this one too, great, but if you can't remember both of them, just do the, the math, solve for C, and you got the other one too. Uh, so let's do one more example here where we talk about uh, just converting temperatures back and forth. So find using those equations. Find the equivalent temperatures. <coughs> I'll give you one in Fahrenheit. We'll convert it to Celsius. We'll give you the other one in Celsius. We'll convert to Fahrenheit. So let's say it's 77 degrees Fahrenheit. We're used to that being, I would say, a very pleasant day. 77 degrees, maybe a a a new, a new, a a nice pleasant warm spring day the birds are coming out the flowers are blooming uh, the trees are blossoming 77 degrees what is that going to be what equation are we using if we're going from Fahrenheit to Celsius I want to use this one so I'm going to say C equals and I'll just plug in the number right away 5 ninths times 77 minus 32 and so at this point let's continue do an order of operations there. I would want to simplify in the parentheses first. So this would be 45. And I'll take out my different color here just to put this over one. Do the same thing, please, on yours. And then what could I reduce this to? You could multiply 5 times 45 and 9 times 1. And that would give you, it would be 5 times 40 would be 200. 5 times 5 would be 25. So that would give you 225 over 9. And you could simplify it from there or you could cross cancel. I noticed this would cross cancel too. So I'm going to put this in my different color. Put that in your different color as well. <coughs> Pardon me. This would be a 1. This would be a 9 because 5 or 9 goes into what am I doing? <laughs> this would be a 5. Sorry. 
Uh, so 9 goes into there one time, 9 goes in here 5 times. So now I could make it, or it makes it easier when I multiply. So 5 times 5 on the top is just 25. 1 times 1 on the bottom is 5. This is the same thing as just plain old 25. So if you're in another country and they told you it's going to be 25 degrees out, that's nice. You don't have to bundle up. You're going to be good to go. 25 degrees is a very pleasant, very nice day. Uh, so let's say you're in another country and they tell you it's going to be 41 degrees out. And originally you're thinking, 41 degrees? I didn't bring a jacket. I didn't. I thought it was going to be warm. I thought it was in Thailand for the summer. No. Okay. So you, you're thinking this at first. Oh man, I got to bundle up. It's going to be fall type weather. Uh-uh, think again, think again. We just said 25 degrees Celsius, so 77. So you should be thinking, uh-oh, if anything, I'm going to be needing to drink some extra water. Uh, it is going to be a scorcher today. So 41 degrees, what are we using this time? We're using this one from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So we're saying that F equals 9 fifths times the Celsius temperature we look back here, times the Celsius temperature, notice this is not in parentheses, so we're going to do this times this first before we add 32 to it. So I'm gonna just going to put the 41 in parentheses here, and then plus 32. So don't do 41 plus 32 first, that would give you a way too high number. This is going to be, become, excuse me, if I plug this, let me put make this a fraction, so let's include this in our different color, put that over 1. I couldn't cross cancel here. 5 and 41 don't have any factors in common. So this one I have to just multiply across. If I was going to leave it as a fraction, it would be 369 over 5 plus 32. You're not going to tell somebody a an improper fraction is the degree measure, though. So let's change this to a decimal. This would be 73.8. That's not the temperature. That's just this part of it. So we got to add 32 to that. And that tells you your temperature. This would be... 70 plus 32 would be 102, add 3.8 more to that, you've got 105.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So, like we had said, it's going to be hot. It's going to be very hot if it's 41 degrees Celsius. If, it is, if it's humid, you're going to be sweating bullets, I think. So, hopefully that helps you. Notice that's, that's it. We're at page 11 of 11. No more to do there. Uh, a shorter lesson, a a lot fewer new terms and things to discuss here. So hopefully you found that helpful. And please let me know if you have any questions in class that you want to go over. Uh, if you notice anything wrong with the lecture, let me know. You can get some bonus points for that. And yeah, now you know some stuff that you probably didn't know before about mass and temperature. Uh, I will catch you guys later.